Welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast, brought to you by Milo Tree. Here's your host, Jillian Leslie. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Blogger Genius Podcast. I'm your host, Jillian Leslie, and I'm a blogger and serial entrepreneur. I build businesses with my husband, David. We started in 2009 with Catch My Party and have grown it into the largest party idea site on the web. Then we created our Milo Tree pop-up app to help bloggers grow their social media followers and email subscribers. And now we have rolled out Milo Tree Cart, which is a way for you to sell digital products in the easiest way possible to your audience. In fact, right now, as I record this, it's Saturday night of our Black Friday weekend. And I have to say, it is so fun hearing from you, interacting with you guys who are purchasing I am so excited to see how you guys can explode your businesses in 2023, selling directly to your people. Now, if you missed our Black Friday special, don't worry, just email me, let me know, email me at jillian at milotree.com and I will see what I can do for you. For today's episode, I have Susie Rosenstein on the podcast, and Susie is a coach. She coaches women in midlife as they go through the transition from being mothers, being career women, being really busy, to all of a sudden taking stock and figuring out what they're going to do in the next half of their life. In the episode, we talk a lot about limiting beliefs and how we hold ourselves back And I feel like this is such a perfect time to release this episode because it's the end of the year. I don't know about you, but I get a little self-reflective where I start to think about my year ahead and what this has been about. And so hopefully you will find this episode as useful as I did. So without further delay, here is my conversation with Susie Rosenstein. Susie, welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast. I am thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. We met because you purchased my literary cart and we got on a call to talk about your business. And I thought it was so interesting that I said, Susie, please come on my podcast. I love when the podcast universe and online marketing brings people together. I've met so many amazing people and now you're one of them too. Oh, thank you. And you have a podcast, a very successful podcast, all about women in midlife or at transitions. Exactly. It's called Women in the Middle, Loving Life After 50. And it really is about transitions, going from not thinking, not even thinking that you're in midlife to going like you got bonked on the head. Oh my God, I'm in midlife. (laughs) Yes. Well, we were talking just before we press record about how women have these phases that we go through, especially if we become mothers. And I think that we get so busy with our children and then all of a sudden they leave and we go, wait, what what was that? Exactly. And it's like we had 18 years to think about the next phase, yet it was such a busy time where you're really not putting yourself first that it really does seem to sneak up out of nowhere. And for sure, we don't have the perspective typically that we have way more time on the other side of the transition than the 18 years. You know, we're going to be, if if we maintain our health and everything is good, uh, we're going to be a a parent of a young adult and then a parent of an adult for way longer than we had with our kids living at home. Okay, so you let's go back, first of all, to you and start with a little bit about your background, because you've made transitions as as you've as your kids have left and stuff like that. So will you share how you got to be a midlife life coach? Absolutely. And I'll tell you, it kind of snuck up on me, too, in a way. And then in another way, I've been doing it all my life. Mm. It's so interesting. So I was like, you know, I had the the pretty traditional path. I, I got married. I, you know, first I went to grad school, like I did the whole school thing. And then I got married in my early thirties, had kids. And then, uh, you know, I was working for 27 years in the field of health promotion and health education. And the last 19 of those 27 years, I was in one specific job 
um, in a book publishing department that had to do with, you know, health, addiction, mental health related books and materials and resources. And I loved my job. I loved it for a long time. And then around um, 14, 15 years in, I started to notice that I just wasn't content anymore. But in those 19 years, I had three babies. I had three mat leaves. Like a lot happened. We moved. Um, a, a lot happened. And yeah, all of a sudden, it seemed like all of a sudden, I just wasn't content anymore. And I couldn't figure it out. It was, it was so confusing. And I realized I was stuck, but I didn't. I wasn't a midlife coach. Everybody and their their auntie weren't talk. Nobody was really talking about it the way it's being talked about now. And I was pushing 50. That's the other thing. So I started to think, I think something's happening here, but I, I, I don't know what to do. And I also had my first kid going to university. Mm -hmm. So it's so obvious now the first little chick's going to leave the nest. That could be freaky. Turning 50 can be really, really jarring. Being in a long-term job can get old because in, when you're in a long-term job, you're not always growing. You're not always challenging yourself. You're not a beginner that often anymore. You pride yourself on being there a while. I really thought it was great to have longevity. <laughs> um, yet when I started to think about what this all meant and deal with some of my feelings, I was really confused. And eventually I realized, oh my God, I think I'm scared to death. <laughs> like, I, I didn't expect fear to be one of the main emotions that came up. I thought it was more boredom and, you know, just not knowing what I wanted to do next career wise. I didn't put it all together that I was really in a midlife funk. Mm -hmm. That's what I call it. I don't call it a midlife crisis. I think it's just you're off. You know, highly competent, overachieving women who get to a point where it's just not so clear what the next steps are, what the next chapter is supposed to look like. We're not even sure what the options are. And then we have these weird feelings where we're just kind of off. And let so alone that's... hormones, hormones. Oh, yeah. I didn't even talk about menopause. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Menopause was weird, too. And uh, for me, I didn't have hot flashes or anything, but. And, and also over all those years when I had my period, I never thought, um, oh, I'm having a mood swing. It didn't really affect me like that. But boy, when I started to hit perimenopause, I had a few definite mood swings where I was like really angry a couple of times and I could watch myself feel so angry. I'm like, what is going on here? And I didn't put it together at all mm -hmm. until I saw my doctor and I and I figured out I was in perimenopause and whatever. So the whole menopause thing, as I was just describing all of that to you, I wasn't even thinking about menopause. And menopause is a huge part of it for many people, for sure. Mm. So, okay. So you're in this job, you're feeling stuck. What happens? I got laid off. I love it. Okay. <laughs> and it's so funny because I fantasized for a long time about getting laid off. You know, what would I do? What would a package look like if I got laid off? Would I bump somebody? I was in a union and I, and I, I didn't really know what I would do, but I did fantasize about it. I mean, I knew what I would do, but I didn't know how I would feel. And then I ended up hiring a coach. I didn't even know what coaching was at that time. I wasn't listening to podcasts. Like I didn't even know what the app did on my phone. If I had a podcast app, I didn't know anything. So, but uh, somebody I knew had started a coaching practice. So I hired her and I realized almost immediately that coaching was really powerful mm -hmm. and that it didn't cross the line at all into anything clinical. Like it was a different thing. It was really about learning how to be mindful, aware of your thinking and goal setting and figuring out resistance to pursue what it is that you actually want you know, and figuring out the feelings that are getting in your own way. So it's kind and of even like, understanding when you're. Oh, it's kind of like clarity. We're not going to go into your childhood and look at all your wounds. We're going to get clear in this moment so that you can have clarity going forward. Would you say that? You're going to really think, yeah, you're really going to think about what it is that you want. And you're going to get really good at understanding what you're thinking and noticing how that, those, that mindset, those thoughts are creating how you feel. 
So you get better at like understanding where you are in the moment, mm -hmm. in the in the time that you're thinking about and where you want to go. And then if you're not like open to just pursuing it, then you have to ask yourself why. Mm -hmm. And that's where you're going to find all kinds of self-talk and limiting beliefs um, that keep you stuck. So yeah, the pursuit is awareness and clarity about what you want, because one of the biggest regrets that so many people will have is that they just don't allow themselves to be happy. Well, why? Why would you not allow yourself to be happy? You have to really think about that. You, you, know? you had shared with me previously some of these limiting thoughts you had. Would, would you share that? Like how you oh, started yeah, they to were discover doozies. this? Like, I think you shared- Yeah, it was so two. shocking. Yeah. Yep. There are two, there are two big ones. And fortunately I've done enough self-work now that I'm not even embarrassed to share them. So here they are. <laughs> here they are. The first one had to do with uh, losing a little bit of weight. So I wanted to lose weight. I knew how to do all the things like most people our age know what to do if they want to lose weight. But then when you don't lose the weight, why what's going on? And so I was um, talking about what challenges have come up for me before when I wanted to lose 10, 15 pounds. And I said, and I quote, well, it's harder for me to lose weight because I'm only 4'10". I am only 4'10". I hope that's not the shocking part of this story. <laughs> but yeah, I said, without batting an eyelash, it's harder for me to lose weight because I'm only 4'10". And what I realized, because this coach busted me on that right away, she's like, why do you think that? And it never occurred to me that that didn't make sense. And that in fact, it was a limiting belief because I was basically saying, thinking, it's harder for me to lose weight because I have a genetic defect. Like there's something getting in my way that's making it impossible for me to accomplish this goal. But in my mind, I was just stating a fact. So somehow I've mixed up that when you're shorter, maybe maybe you hold your weight more in the middle and it's harder to lose or like some other experience I had that I was making up. I was making it up. It's like, oh, oh, uh, uh, other people in my family have difficulty losing a little bit of weight. So I must too. Like, I don't know what I was doing. I don't know where that came from exactly, mm -hmm. but I know that I had been short for my whole life. And I know that I'd been thinking that thought for over four decades. How did so, you, how did you change it? What did you say when that thought well, would come for, up? What would you do? Well, first it's awareness. It's just even understanding that this thought is present. Mm -hmm. And understanding what happens, like how you feel when you think a thought like that. So when I when I would think, well, it's harder for me to lo lose weight because I'm only 4'10", right away, I would feel hopeless. Mm. Right. There's no I point. There's no point trying. There's no yep. point, right? Yep. There, so yep. I would just feel kind of um, disconnected from the goal, right? And like you've already you, failed. You've already failed. I failed in advance. That's exactly what happened. But I didn't even know I was thinking a thought that was creating that for myself. I didn't even get it at all. I thought, well, this is just a fact. And so when I realized that I was setting myself up to fail immediately with that sort of thought, you, I, uh, I came, practiced all kinds of thoughts that made it more possible. Like I needed to find a thought that created motivation or some kind of a belief that it was possible. I didn't need to think it's a rock star. I'm going to lose this weight in a month. I just needed to think something that helped me lean into the goal and support what it was I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And so it was, I used a bridge thought. A bridge thought is like a little phrase that you can put on the beginning or someplace in the thought that just makes it more doable. It's like a baby step. So for me, it was, I'm open to the idea that weight loss isn't as hard as I thought. Mm. And you know, that's not that challenging to believe. I can, oh, I could be open to that idea. And I'm just saying, well, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not quite as challenging as I thought. So when you're looking for a thought that's useful, you need to try different thoughts on because you're looking for that feeling. What feeling is going to help me lean in versus resist to accomplish mm -hmm. the goal? Right? So, okay. I want to, can I stop you for a second? Yes. Let's say I'm listening to this podcast and I go, you know, I'm feeling unease and I don't know why. And I've got kids and they're healthy and whatever. And I've got my little problems, but in general, like my, I should be happier than I am. 
What is your best way to go, I'm sure I'm having these limiting thoughts, but I don't even know. And I'm too busy. How am I going to find that? Like you had this coach and you were able to say this to her as if it were like the truth. And she challenged you on that. And you went, whoa, I didn't even know I had this thought. So what is your kind of quick way? Like if my audience, they don't have money to hire a life coach, they don't have the time, but they don't even know what tapes are running in their brains yeah. to go, oh, let me identify that. Do I want to challenge that? I want to uh, question if that's yeah. real. So what is your first step in figuring it out? Well, the first step, you kind of hinted at it already. It's being curious, mm. not just believing everything you think. So the other thing you pointed out is that that this imaginary person <laughs> um, picked up on the feeling mm. versus the thought because she didn't know what she was thinking. So there's a feeling there. I, so the, I, like the, I feel unease. I feel yeah, exactly. stuck or I feel bored or I feel stressed. Exactly. I feel inadequate. And I don't know what the purpose is. So all of when you feel a feeling, you need to know that a thought is creating it. And if you can catch the thought, you need to understand that that thought is creating a feeling. So however you dive into this little understanding, just know that they're connected. Mm. Thoughts create feelings. Feelings are created by thoughts. One thing that I do, and I think I had shared this with you previously, is when I am feeling stuck, so I have a lot of things to do where I'm juggling a lot. And there are days I wake up and I just go, it's too much. I can't do it. And when I have that thought, I know to do this exercise where I open up a Google Doc and I do 10 minutes of stream of consciousness writing, which I had shared with you, and I let the demons out. I will write the horrible, horrible thoughts that are kind of keeping me stuck that I don't want to see. And they're, and it's horrible. Like it is that I'm a loser and nobody loves me and I'm fat and I'm not talented and all these things. And I kind of say, all right, you've got these voices. Like I'm going to give you this platform go. And I write them. And after about two or three minutes, it start. And, and by the way, it's it's vitriol. It's mean. Mm. It's horrible. But by giving it a place, giving it space, all of a sudden the narrative starts to shift because I've kind of run out. Like, all right, you said that, and I, I like, okay, you said the unsayable. And guess what? I'm still here, and I didn't die, and nothing horrible happened. So let's keep going. And then eventually, it ends up with my to do list of I've got to pick up like this at the grocery store, and I need to remember to bring the snacks for whatever. And then by the end of it, 10 minutes, I start to get on my own side weirdly and go, Oh, you got this. All right, here's what like it starts with like a pick up this at the grocery store. Then it goes to here are the things you could do today to, you know, push the rock up the hill. And then it's like, okay, by the end of 10 minutes, it's like, you got this. It's all right. You're cool. Like you, you know, whatever. And I weirdly watch this pattern. And so that for me is how I start to get in touch with what is keeping me stuck. And then by the way, oh. I delete the file. Like this is not <laughs> my diary. This is nothing. Yeah. This is just me kind of get it out, get it out. Yeah. So what you're talking about is a, uh, a a little exercise that helps you find thoughts. And that is really what's important to do. To You got to find the thoughts because you need to be aware of what is there before you can tweak or make a change or decide that you like your reasons. So um, a couple of questions everybody can ask themselves. And you could ask yourself, once you see those thoughts, you would pick one. And just be curious about it. And it's a very simple question. It's just why. Mm. So why do I feel stuck? You have to trust that you're going to come up with an answer, even if your answer is going to change or you've got a variety of reasons. Why am I feeling unease? Why do I think I should be happier than I am? Like that thought in and of itself is creating a problem because when you think I should be happier than I am, how do you feel? It's not helping your happiness. Mm. Like maybe you feel sad or at a, uh, like confused or overwhelmed versus motivated, capable, confident, you know? Mm. So just asking yourself why. And if you can't answer it, then I, I love what you suggested is just to do a like a dump 
a thought download, get it all out, but then be curious, pick one of those thoughts, look at it and, and just play with it a little bit. And a lot of times just by asking why is all you need, because also to answer the question, you need to pause. And most of us aren't pausing. We think we're too busy to pause, you know, or we're multitasking and we can't even like split up what's going on because there's just so much. We're in like a spin. Another question that's a really good one to ask is what am I making this mean? Mm. So mm. even I should be happier than I am. Why, why am I thinking that? And then what am I making it mean that I should be happier than I am? Again, it's just another way to poke around and be curious to see what it is you have to say. And I think that these two questions will really uh, illuminate a lot for you, but you have to slow down. They're not complicated questions. Like a lot of times it's not rocket science. You just have to slow down, believe that you have the answers and be curious. And that, that really moves forward. I want to take a short break because I know I am talking a lot about digital products and the value of selling them. And you might be thinking, I don't even know where to start. Well, I've got a personality quiz for you. You can grab this for free at milotree.com slash quiz. And this will help guide you and figure out what you could build first. And it also has a worksheet so that you can actually come up with a product idea. Plus, it's got some other guides and tools to help you. So again, grab this at milotree.com slash quiz. And I promise you, it's a lot easier than you think. And now back to the show. My two favorite phrases for this are, I'm open to the opportunity mm. and I'm learning. Mm. I'm learning. I'm mm. learning. And I have never resisted the idea that I can learn. I feel very competent and confident about my ability to learn. I know there's lots of things I don't know, and I do tend to get freaked out. And we'll talk about that in a second. But um, I, if I'm saying I'm learning, one thought that I use Here's a thought that I use all the time that really helps me. It's about self-care. And it was suggested to me by a coach. And I just said, can I use it exactly as you stated it? And she said, yes. And it's, I'm learning to take exceptional care of my body. Mm -hmm. And I love this thought because anytime you feel too rushed to exercise, to take a walk, to take your makeup off, <laughs> to, to floss your teeth, to do anything that has to do with self-care, to spend time on your hobby, to investigate going on a trip that you think will never happen, like anything. You just want to think, I'm, I'm learning to take exceptional care of myself. I'm learning to take exceptional care of my body, whatever works for you. And I love that I'm learning and I love the idea of exceptional care because it almost like gives you permission to do the thing. Mm. When so much, so many of us, it's so easy to talk ourselves out of what's in our calendar. And I know we all love calendars. We've got planners coming out the yin yang. Yet, are we following the planners? Are, or are we using them to beat ourselves up about all the crap we're not doing? Mm. You know, so that simple thought I'm learning with exceptional care has really helped me follow through on some of the things I was ready to to skip and do something else instead that didn't have nothing to do with self-care. Mm. It's putting you front and center, I, that you matter. Yes. You matter. Yes. Yes. Becoming, uh, finally putting yourself first is something that is, I think for women, a lifelong battle. And one of the things I love about midlife is that many of us do have a break in the action to some degree. Our older kids don't need us in the same way. They still need you, but it's not in the same way. And then when they leave, then you definitely have more opportunity and more flexibility to rearrange your priorities. Mm. So I think that's terrific. Now you did ask me about another one of the stinky thoughts. Exactly. And this one was so, is so interesting and, and speaks to how we met. Yes. And it speaks to the solution that you've been so passionate <laughs> about providing to people but, like me. Yes. And that, and that I can challenge your narrative. So, so, okay. Will you share the second limiting thought? Oh, this was so embarrassing, but I'm not embarrassed anymore to share it. But when it happened, 
I was being coached publicly and I was taking master coach training and I had to do a final project. And the project that I uh, created was a three-part webinar series. Now, if you're in on the online space, webinars probably don't freak you out anymore. But for me, that just screamed technology. Like the content, I could pull the content together and I could make a PowerPoint. But a registration page, uh, like hooking up all the technology, I, I was my head was going to explode. And so I was getting coaching on why I was procrastinating. So I realized I was procrastinating. I realized I wanted to do the project. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to get the certification. Yet look at the result I had. Nothing. I was procrastinating and I was freaking myself out about technology. So I realized through this coaching <laughs> that... I had a thought. It was very simple. Again, not rocket science, but it was getting in my way. And it was, I suck at technology. Wow. And now I'm 59. I had this thought uh, clarity in my earlier 50s. I think I was 52, 53. And at that point, like I'd realized, why do I think that? Remember, I'm going to ask myself why. Why do I think that I suck at technology? Right away, I went back to something that happened in 1980, 1981 in a computer lab in high school with a floppy disk where there was a screw up and I lost data. And so, so since then, for decades now, I've been thinking I suck at technology. And the way that shows up, just like the weight loss example, is I fail in advance. Mm. When I think I suck at technology, I feel hopeless again. I feel incompetent. And I don't feel incompetent in any other part of my business or life, actually, you know, but this one thing made me feel like an idiot. The way I was thinking about it created just a horrible uh, variety of negative emotions for me that just pulled me back and kept me procrastinating. I didn't lean in to do anything that would help me create the goal or the result that I wanted to create for myself, even though it was so obvious that's what I wanted. Now, I have to stop you here because you shared this with me, and I had just gotten off two coaching calls with women who have their own businesses, like online businesses, and both of them said to me, I suck at technology. I suck mm -hmm. at technology. And then you said it, and bells went off in my head because I think it about myself as well, and I have technology companies. Now I have a partner. I know I have, and I think of myself as smart. I have my partner. My husband is a technologist. He can solve anything. He builds all of our tools. And so I think to myself, oh my God, this, this is not just you. This is me. These are these women. I'm sure if you're listening to this episode, you are thinking the same thing about yourself. But because I have David and he has a whole perspective, he says to me, you don't suck at technology. I mean, we all you know, have our issues. He's like, but technology doesn't serve you. And we have it on our whiteboard, which is the words, technology is hard. But like, it's hard for everybody. How many times have you sent yourself a password reset seven times because you can't get into your account? I mean, these are yes. basic things. Right now, Susie, we started recording and you're like, oh my God, my, my video isn't working. And I'm like, okay, change this or whatever. Like this is life. But one thing though, that David points out all the time, because he's so immersed in it, most technology sucks. So while mm. we as women take it on ourselves to go, I suck at technology, yes. when all of a mm -hmm. sudden you can see it from David's eyes and go, oh, like David will be like, like, it's not like he doesn't get tripped up, but he knows how to solve it. But he'll be like, this is built so horribly or like most platforms he hates because he knows what good technology looks like and what bad technology looks mm. like, what a good interface looks like what a bad interface looks like. So because of him, he's empowered me to go, oh, wait, this isn't all my fault. This isn't that I'm a loser. This isn't like, it's not like the technology is right. Maybe the technology sucks. Maybe the way they're hiding their menus and you have to go here and click here, like it's totally not intuitive. And it was yeah. so empowering for me to hear this and made us go, okay, we're going to build a platform for women like you yeah. where that technology is simple. 
I just want to um, finish this story because what happened today was so interesting when my camera didn't work because I just used it two hours ago and it was fine. So I didn't touch anything. What happened today was evidence on how far I've come with that thought. Mm. I didn't sweat. My heart didn't race. I didn't get all distracted and freaked out that oh, I was feel suck inadequate. And, Did you feel inadequate? I, nothing like that happened. Nothing like that happened because I have a new thought that I've been working on for, I don't know, seven years now or so. And it's, I am learning to manage the technology I need for my business. So again, that I'm learning, even though I'm, I'm not a whiz at technology, I, I no longer think I suck because that thought really didn't serve me. Honestly, my heart would race before when I couldn't figure something out if somebody else was waiting on me, you know, but I'm learning because again, I know I can learn and I know I can Google it. My kids are always saying, mom, just Google it, just Google it. <laughs> and it's so right. And then my husband, David, is always saying, just turn it off and turn it on. Oh, oh my God. I was just going <laughs> to share that. Wait, I was just going to share that. Like David, my husband, the biggest thing, and please everybody know this, his first thing to me is reboot, reboot. Yeah. <laughs> like, like your phone isn't working, reboot it. Reboot your computer. Like it is shocking how many times that will solve your tech issue. Between that and Google, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, but so with my low cart, my low tree cart, I uh, was curious about it because. Now, where did you I, hear about it? Are you on my email list? Like, how did you know what I was doing? I'm on your email list, but I don't remember how I got there. I did see you on Kim Garst's um YouTube or the Facebook channel, her show, but I knew you before that. Oh, I know you were promoting a webinar about master. Was it a, ma a workshop? You were promoting a webinar about workshops, but I don't know where I found that out. Okay. I don't know if I was on your email list before that, okay. but I purchased it. I okay. attended the workshop. Okay. You made an offer that was irresistible, which oh, was, if you. you send me something, I will comment in person. Like I will respond to your question or idea. And I think we even, you wrote something, but we may have hopped on a quick call. I don't recall that part. Um, but I thought, well, this is interesting. And then I heard you on Kim's show. And then um, I got this, this email talking about this user-friendly processing system. And it was interesting because I didn't need it. Like I do have a guy, I have a website guy. So anytime I need anything created, it's all, he creates things for me and it's all custom and, and I have payment processing on my website, but I can't do it myself. So I could see when you talked about, you can test things. That's where you really caught my ear because sometimes I don't want to go through creating something, paying somebody to create it and having to make decisions about tabs on my homepage. You know, I yeah. just want to test something or just see if this is of interest or, or just to get some kind of, feedback. And so I thought, wow, to have like a price point the way it was like this, this could really solve that problem. But I was worried, is this going to be complicated? And then I attended your free webinar about it. I'm like, well, that lady's telling me it's going to be fine. <laughs> so yeah. So I thought, what the heck? And I bought it and I have to say it was so user-friendly. I was so proud of myself <laughs> that I got it to work. And what did you do with it? What did you do? What is your first I, product that you set up in my little okay, chart? The, the first product, I just started with something that um that I thought was very user friendly. So I have a podcast and there's a popular episode about being too busy in midlife. And in that episode, I talk about my mango moment, which is one of my worst, it might be the worst mommy moment I ever had when I realized my kid kept talking to me like when he was little, he couldn't handle a knife and he wanted a mango. We used to, you know, when you have fruit in a bowl and the avocados and the mangoes, when they're finally ripe, it's like, hey, somebody better eat this mango. <laughs> somebody better eat that avocado. So he wanted a mango and he kept telling me, mommy, I want, a, please cut me a mango, cut me a mango. And I kept saying, no, I felt too busy to cut my kid a mango. Mm. Ugh, wah, wah, such a failed mom moment. And, you know, I had perspective on it years later as a life coach, when I'm looking for stories to illustrate points, I'm like, oh my God, 
I was too busy. In my mind, the thought I had is I'm too busy. And I realized it was such an important um, issue to explore with midlife women and and with any any women who think they're busy. Um, you really have to think about it. Anyway, so I thought that's a popular episode. Let me create a, a, a podcast workbook that goes with that episode. So I went into Canva, I created the workbook, and then I created a, a sales page which was so easy on my tree cart, right? Cause on we have, tree we have these oh my fill God. in the blank sales pages. So easy. So you know where to put your, you don't even know what you need to do because it just walks you through. It is such a template. The three benefits of the purchase, the, the picture of your little profile picture and your, your little bio and just everything, a title. And it's so user-friendly and there aren't that many things to decide. You don't need to decide sizes. You don't have, 50 million colors to choose from. There's like five or something, right? It's just so easy. So you're moving forward. You're creating momentum. Then there's two things, a couple things you have to hook up. You have to hook up Stripe. So you have to hook up the bank. So right away, I'm like, "Uh uh-oh, here comes some tech. I have to get two things. I'm like, I'm nervous. I already had Stripe, but I never hooked anything up because my guy does that. I I never did. So um. Anyway, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. And it's my big girl moment. Here's my thought. I'm learning to manage the technology I need for my business. And it was so easy. I couldn't believe how easy it was because you even had support in there on what you need to look for, you know, when you're hooking it up to Stripe. Okay. So I'm like, all right, that part's done. Then I had to hook it up to my email provider. And again, I'm like, uh uh-oh, here comes MailChimp, right? Yes, this is MailChimp. I'm like, "Uh uh-oh. So there's one thing I didn't know how to do and I didn't want to learn. So I have a VA and I just said, can you just make a mailing list and a tag for Milo Tree? And she did that. That was the one thing I didn't do myself, not because I couldn't, but because I didn't, I didn't want to deal with it. So she did that. And then she told me when it was done and I'm like, okay, time for me to hook up my. (laughs) So I clicked and I figured it out. It was so easy. I felt like I could have climbed a mountain. Oh, after I did that, I was oh my so God. happy. That makes, that's exact. Honestly, like that is, that is, that's the whole purpose. Like you've made my day. This uh, is exactly why, because I want to get you selling. I don't want you to worry about the technology. You know, so we, easy. we get so freaked out. Like I need to have my low. It's like people who obsess about their blogs and how they look and the colors and the logo. And it's like, no, 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 get going, go see. Yeah. Get yourself in front of your audience to say, do you guys want this? Do you want this? Like, how can I serve you and serve Mm. myself at the same time? Jillian, there was one other spot that was so easy that I really appreciated. So then I'm like, okay, now I'm going to go back into the summary notes where my podcast is and a blog. And I'm going to go in there and I'm going to add this link. And I go into the the back end of my low tree. Like your dashboard. Yeah. Yeah. And oh my God, there it is. This is the (laughs) link to sell. And this is the link to the landing page. And I'm like, or sales page, I forget what what you call it. But you, but just that little thing of separating those links out and labeling them was so user-friendly. I had so much confidence and I knew, okay, for this purpose, I need the link, not just the sell link. I need the landing page. So I'm going to grab that link and then just go put it in. So honestly, I have a sister who writes a blog and I I texted her immediately. I said, you need this. This oh. is idiot proof. I can oh. do it. Oh, you can do I, it too. <laughs> I love that. Again, remember, like, like this is, this is like, so like beautiful. This is like warming my heart because this, I just want to make your life easy. I want to solve this problem for you. So you did, you did solve the problem. And, and when it was so because we got on that call, the first call after you signed up for a mileage card and you go, I don't need this. You go, I bought this and I have your quote, but it was, I just want a, a platform where I can muck around and I won't F it up. And I was like, yeah. my friend, go into my card because you cannot break it. Go try to break it because I promise you, you can't and you can't get yourself. Like for me, I have this thing, which is I am afraid to press buttons. I am totally. afraid where this is going to totally. lead me and I'm going to mess it up and I'm not going to be able to then solve it. Whereas my husband is all about press, press buttons. And he's taught my 15 year old daughter to press buttons. But I have to tell you, I'm scared to press buttons. Me too. 
my goal as a woman is to empower other women to instead of just like they're growing their audiences. And I always say, if you have an audience and you are not selling to your audience, you are leaving a bag of money on a table, go grab that bag of money. But then they go, oh, but to set this up seems so complicated. And that's why I want to go get that money, go do it and serve your audience at the same time. Well, that's it, right? Because a lot of times, you know, people need to hear the information another way or take it deeper with a follow-up product. So you really are serving your audience deeper. So if I have some busy moms who really want to, you know, apply the information they heard on the podcast, a workbook is really going to help them do that Mm -hmm. because you're going to slow down. You're going to reflect. You're not just going to consume a podcast and move on to the next thing. And like you said, for me, I did just want to muck around. Like if I have a workshop idea, but I don't want to incorporate it or commit to a series or something bigger or pay for something to be created when I don't really know if it's going to fly or not, I don't have to. This just makes it so easy for me to dip my toe in when I'm an experiment, you know, and Mm. just see uh, Mm. before I make a commitment and then see what else I want to do with it. But I'm not even able to really think creatively yet about all the ways I can use it, but I think it's terrific. Well, it kind of speaks to what you're sharing as a life coach. It's like, as your life coach, you're in there exploring and seeing what resonates for yourself. Like you have this idea, you don't, you you know, you have this thought that's been uh, a limiting belief and you don't even know. And then you have to go in and, and dig and say, is it because of this or this, or how do I change it? Like there's all this experimentation. And I feel like when we can take that into our own businesses and be curious. So you go, I think my audience might want this, but maybe they don't. Maybe they want it a little bit differently, or maybe they want a totally different thing. But when we can get curious, I feel like that's when the ideas just start percolating. And there's so much out there to test and to try, and that we don't have to take it so personally when maybe it doesn't work. Yeah, I agree. And this felt like a very easy thing to do. It was very easy for me to create something useful. I put it up for $5, you know, so it's very accessible and we'll just see what happens with it. And, um, and I know just by doing it, I feel so much more confident that I'm able to do this sort of thing. So how might this work for other, other things in my business? I know that I'll be able to come up with so many ways to play with it. It's really, really good. And I, which is exactly what you said it was easy to use. It It is easy to use. When you don't think that you're able to do something like this, you can do something like this. Mm-hmm. It really was easy to use. I, I have never hooked up anything technology speaking like that before. And you helped me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that makes me, honestly, thank so you. So good. Thank you. And again, remember everybody, technology is hard. Like, yes, we, I suck at it, but so does everybody. Other thing that's so interesting about that, um, that I suck thought that is so popular with so many of us is really think about what you're saying. Mm. Is it all technology? Like you're interpreting something. It's not all technology. You you could probably drive a car. That's pretty complex. You can probably learn how, like you, you, you make food in your oven. That's technology. Like, you know how to make your get to coffee Netflix. in the morning. Yeah. You get to Netflix. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So when I realized when I was doing it with the webinar, what I was really referring to was, I don't yet understand how to work this webinar software. Mm. Mm. But I interpreted that Mm. by I suck at all technology, Mm. right? So if I wouldn't have had this thought dialed in today when my webcam didn't go on, it would be I suck at technology. No, what's really happening is my webcam isn't working and I don't know how to fix it yet. Oh, I love So yet that. is another thing to to that to add on to sentences, thoughts that can really help you because I know I'll figure this webcam thing out. I'm gonna unplug it. I am gonna Google it and I'm gonna go into settings. And it's probably one of those things. And I would and say I'm reboot, learning. reboot, reboot. Right. And reboot. So I'm learning to manage the technology I need for my business. And today it's a webcam. I think that is so powerful. I really do. Okay. So just in terms, if people, like, I just feel like you are such a a lovely teacher and if people want to learn from you, how can they do that? And then I also would love you to share 
like your best thing to help women get unstuck. So would you share how they can learn from you? And then would you just, if there's a way to synthesize your message for somebody listening to this in the car, who's busy, who feels crazed, what would that be as well? So start with how they can learn about. Okay. Ooh, ooh, okay. So um, the first thing to do, I would say is uh, check out the podcast. So it's women in the middle loving life after 50. You don't need to be 50, but the examples and everything I use are midlife related age and stage. So for many women, it's 40 to 65, 70, you know, that's a range Mm -hmm. depending on what's going on for you. So check it out. You can find it on any podcast app, iTunes, Spotify. You can go to my website, susierosenstein.com and you can find it there as well. Um, Also, I have a freebie. It's called 10 top questions to reimagine your life after 50. And you can access that at www.susierosenstein.com forward slash 10 questions. You can also check out the Milo tree cart uh, product that I just put up, which is the workbook for the podcast episode 255. So if you go to iTunes or uh, any place you listen to the podcast and look up episode 255, you'll get the show notes and in the show notes, there's a link to get the podcast uh, episode. And that's you, what I would suggest. Well, before you continue with your your wisdom, mm-hmm. don't you feel though, like like we were talking about this previously, as women, I'm not sure we're prepped for what's coming. Mm, yeah. Like, in, like when, but like before I had a child, I had no idea. Like people would try and tell me what it was like, but to be honest with you, I felt like I had jumped into the deep end without knowing how to swim. And as I'm going through, you know, like menopause and all of this, I didn't like, I don't know what to expect. And nobody told me how I would be thinking or feeling or night sweats or anything like that. So Do you think listening to your podcast is a good way to kind of get a sense of what these stages are for women, what we should expect? Because I wish, I don't know, I wish I, maybe I couldn't have heard it at the time, but I wish I knew more. Yes, that's great. Oh, and I forgot to mention my blog, by the way, when you can, uh, it's called Women in the Middle blog and you can get it on my website. There's a tab. Um, Yeah, so I think, um, that's exactly what my podcast is about and my blog. It's all my content. I teach a program called the Women in the Middle Academy. I have the Women in the Middle blog, the Women in the Middle podcast, and it's all based on a framework and this idea that there are some major areas of your life that you're going to want to be more intentional about. And those three areas are relationships, your professional contribution, the way you show up in the world professionally and self-care, however you define it. I'm thinking about it more as how you take care of yourself um, emotionally, physically, spiritually, uh, what lights you up, passion, projects, hobbies, like all the things, including how you take care of yourself in the more traditional ways. And so the idea is to be open to the idea that it is a transition And that you probably have some beliefs that you need to work on understanding about aging and what's possible for you that could get in your way. Mm -hmm. So I think just really thinking about it as a transition and appreciate that it is a transition. Like if you think back to when you had babies, um, nobody told me that I was going to start to imagine my infant as a barracuda when I was breastfeeding. Like nobody told me that. (laughs) When you're when you're uh, buying your first home or settling your first home, you know, it's a whole transition of what it costs and what it takes to establish that and what your decor is like and where you prioritize spending money when you're um, at every phase of life, it's a transition. And now in midlife, your kids might be moving toward leaving the house. You might be in a long-term relationship or maybe you're single for the first time in your life and since as an adult. Um, maybe you're thinking about retirement. Maybe you're a, an entrepreneur for the first time. Like there's lots of transitions and also menopause. There are mm. things that happen in menopause. There are changes. So I think just knowing that it is a transition and 
I'm not an expert in uh, human development, but I have done some reading about it. And midlife isn't the last stage, right? There's another stage of, and it, there are several ways this is defined, but there's another stage uh, of becoming, you know, senior, which is not when you start to get discounts. It's <laughs> later than that, right? <laughs> Although I did get a discount recently and I was a little taken aback. I'm like, wow, I guess, I guess that's <laughs> happening now. <laughs> so um, so that's really what I think you need to do is just appreciate that it's a transition and check your thinking because you can think about it as a downhill slide to the end, mm. or you can think about it as a phase of unbelievable opportunity that you never saw coming. Mm. Susie, that is so inspiring. And I, I just love talking to you and I feel like you share so much wisdom. Oh, so thank you. I just want to say. Thank you so much for being my friend and for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I had a really great time and I can't wait to sell more stuff and help more people. <laughs> sell more stuff. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. I hope you guys like this episode. It's so funny. When I got on the call with Susie, I thought we'd be talking about how she's built her business and all of her programs and her funnels. And instead, we started talking about limiting beliefs and I was like, Ooh, this is super interesting. This is what I need to hear right now. And hopefully you guys need to hear it too. I also felt really happy that through my literary card, Susie felt empowered, especially when it came to technology. If you missed my Black Friday special, just email me at jillian at mylotree.com and let me know and I will see what I can do for you. And I will see you here again next week. Mm -hmm.